You can still see. <laughs> this is nice and romantic over here. <laughs> so this coming season is going to be a totally different dynamic for everyone, right? Because there's a lot. Of, yeah, changed. definitely. Alliances are shifting for sure. Um, we, you know, and I think the beginning of the season, it's an incredibly tense. Usually, we take a season to work toward the. Um, insanity or like that level of tension but we're starting with it this season and it's not really it's not letting up there's not a lot of breathing room so far <laughs> from what I read how different does it feel because it's a shorter season now um you know it does feel different I would say like we are all kind of committing to really enjoying thank you the um enjoying these 13 as much as possible and it does like it it feels like everything is compacted energy wise to like really it's uh i don't know we're excited to get going so from season one to now is there yes. any way you could have ever predicted this trajectory oh absolutely not no 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't say like I had any kind of trajectory in mind though, so uh, but certainly not this one. What is the, your favorite thing that your character has gone through throughout her journey? Oh, um, well, what's happened most recently now that Diana is back, because Hannah Lloyd is, she's such a fun, great girl to hang out with. She is super talented and funny. Um, and I really think that this dynamic between Adeline trying to mother this potentially bad seed child uh, is going to be, it's, it's fun. It, the writing so far, there's been a lot of fun, funny moments. Is the next season going to be more action heavy for you, do you think? Or what is it? Uh, for me, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, I think, I will say Adeline is definitely in the thick of it more with the gang so far this, this coming season. Is it kind of fun too to play that she's back? I mean, she's part oh, of the yeah. game now. Yeah, she yeah. So outside oh, it's so it's so fun for me because I get to hang out with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and will they be delving more into the like relationship triangle? Yes, they will be delving further into that. Is there anything you can drop a hint about? I actually no because I don't know yet. We only have three <laughs> episodes. Uh, we've only received the first three episodes, but that is at the forefront for sure has to be because the fans love it too. Oh yeah. All of the shippers. <laughs> <laughs> How do you want things to end up happening? Um I don't want things to end. You know, I would prefer her to stay alive. <laughs> for, the, for, for things. Like I would prefer to end the series alive. That would be my preference. Anything beyond that is just icing on the cake. <laughs> So when you get the scripts, do you actually think that there's a possibility you're going to be dead in the script you're reading? For sure. Yeah. I mean, I think, well, I know they still, I know, I was about to say they, they would have to work out a few things, but they don't. They really don't. After last season, I think they've shown that uh, nobody is safe. <laughs> when the show first started, did you have any idea that Adeline would become such a major part of the no, show? No, I had no idea. I didn't know that Adeline would even last longer than an episode, really, so. biggest strength and weakness um, at this point? I, well, I think Adeline's biggest strength is her... Well... I would say her, her commitment. I think, you know, with her children, she really has shown that she's willing and wants to protect them at all costs. Her biggest weakness... Um, You know, Nick is a weakness for sure. Uh, she almost got him killed that way, actually. Uh, yeah, I guess it would be the same like her kids because that's the thing you can't. She is so strong in order to protect her kids, but if her kids are in danger, then you know her loyalties fall away after that. So, hey, this is gonna be the last question. Do you guys still do a lot off the set together like you used to Oh, yeah. Time? Yeah, yeah. Well, because we all live up in Portland now. And actually, I'm so glad to be getting back to work because everyone's kind of been traveling over hiatus and now we're back. Yeah, the girls and I, we, our new tradition is to go to the Rose Garden in Portland with Rose. So that's our summer, uh, summer thing. So. Nice 
stretchy. It's very nice. Yes. And you can just do buddy moon too. So yeah. That. Well, that we actually did a couple seasons ago. So it just came out this summer, but that was a, a little bit ago. It's cute though. Yeah, it's great. He did such a great job, man. Hey, good lighting. I will never reject. <laughs> so next season's going to be different for you guys. There's gonna yes. Be extra. A little extra yes. fuzzy little thing. Uh, yeah, we'll see. So far. We, we pick up right where we left off, so the news has just been delivered that I'm pregnant, you know, in the caverns, and, um, you know, they like to do that to us, really great news in really dire times. Um, so we'll see. I can't imagine the show will end without a little Fuchsbaugh Blutbad baby on screen. You know, I, I, it, it's, it's, too, it's too juicy of a question to not have answered in the show, so... We'll see. I don't know. We only have three scripts so far. And it's all pretty much happening real time. You know, the first three scripts. There isn't, isn't a time jump at all. We're all just like immediately dealing with the aftermath of HW being obliterated and Black Claw overtaking everything and Renard going to the dark side and Nick like should be dead but he's not and the stick and is Eve Juliet and... <laughs> and um, so we're just kind of we're dealing with a lot. We're dealing with just a lot in Portland right now. Um, so <laughs> I love that the show has managed to kind of reinvent itself every season. Yeah. And is, are we going to see that for this last, you know, this next one too? A kind of a different take or, or like something? Different? Yeah. You know, I think it. Um, I think we're on the same trajectory that we ended the season with, which I thought was a really cool. Um, uh, just like the momentum really picked up in the last several episodes of season five you know everything got very um, very urgent very uh, stakes were super high really there wasn't any um, storyline kind of like being teased like we were just like delivering 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 and I think that's so far we're keeping with that because you know we we, we don't um, we have a shorter episode order this season and so that's you know fewer episodes to cram the same amount of information so I think the urgency will be um, kicked up a notch. It seems like you and Monroe are trying to have like a normal life happy life. Do you think a happy ending is possible for your characters? Um, I think so. It might not be in Portland. You know that has been talked about a lot in the script or with the characters. Like there's just kind of a lot of dialogue in the first three episodes of well, Portland is really bad news right now. <laughs> we, we might want to leave Portland. Uh, we're not safe here. And I think I think Rosalie, she innately is, um, you know, is, she wants to escape. And I think, you know, the pressure of bringing a child into this unknown, scary space where she's now totally, they are totally exposed as a couple where she's like kind of they kind of want to like live a quiet life, go under the radar, you know, kind of just not be the face of any movement. And now they're like fully, uh, you know, Black Claw is like their enemy number one to Black Claw, and I and I think that's really scary to Rosalie um, and Monroe. So so we'll see. You know, maybe they'll have right off into the sunset to Tacoma. I don't know somewhere. <laughs> Start a new life. Any baby names being named? <laughs> That's a good question. No, no. But uh, I, I would imagine with the couple something, you know, kind of old-fashioned and sweet. Have they discussed anything about what kind of powers this baby's going to have? Like what, what Which one? The, your when, baby. Oh, yeah, well, like, you know, that's like the big question. Is it going to be a hybrid? Is yes. it going to be, is one species going to dominate? You know, um, I don't know. I don't know. But it's super fun. That's why being on a, a genre fantasy show like this, I mean... It's limitless, you know, what you can do, and as an actor, it's always super fun. I mean, every script is like, I could have a second head all of a sudden. It's like, oh yeah, <laughs> I grow a second head, you know, and that makes sense. So, so it, it keeps it really fun. How would you feel if the two cancel each other out and you ended up with a human baby? I know, right? <gasps> <gasps> the thought. I don't know. It's a good question. Because, I mean, again, it's like you know, interspecies mixing has kind of been foreboden in a lot of generations and we're sort of, you know, you know, saying we're a modern couple and that's ridiculous and, and so but I don't know I don't know if it's done. <laughs> we'll see. How are we doing? Good. How are 
are you doing? I'm doing just great. <laughs> all of me. Why not take all of me? So, who would like to begin? Well, I would like to know mm. about your evil turn and yeah. how far it's going to go this next season. I mean, is he... Is he always going to be on the outs with the group? Well, if I have anything to do with it, I would love to take it as dark as possible and uh, as confrontational as we can. I think it's more interesting. I think we've seen him be a participant in the whole, you know, the gang, and uh, I don't want it to be predictable. And uh, it's really great that this is a character that uh, has kept the audiences guessing and people are always suspicious of him, as they should be. I don't think even Nick or, or, the, or the group ever really trusted him, and now they definitely have reason <laughs> to distrust him. Um, yeah, it's it's a full-out war at this point, and and that's really enjoyable for me. Are you going to be the major baddie next season? It looks or? like it. So it's, wow. It looks like it, which which is really great because I, I I like it when the stories and the mythology stay in house, so to speak. It's it's all about the main characters and their inter dynamics and their dynamics and interrelationships and um and i think it's uh, it's fun for the fans to watch them uh really be the focus rather than having to bring in a big baddie we've done that so uh yeah it looks like it how do you want things to end for renard <laughs> in a blaze of glory <laughs> <laughs> and it just might i mean you never know you know you live by the sword you know so we'll see um but they're definitely uh full-blown enemies at this point. What's that like with a cast as close to be able to play a full-blown enemy of these friends of yours? Oh, it's just fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I mean, like, yeah, we are very, very close. It's, a, it's, it's quite special after this many years. Um, but no, it's, it's great. And, you know, I, I always enjoy... I mean, I never felt comfortable as Renard being part of the gang, it always felt very much like it didn't quite, like, a, like an outfit that didn't fit quite right on him, you know, so this feels a lot more appropriate. Um, and uh, it really is like two camps completely divided. And so there's some great stuff coming up. There's some really great stuff coming up, but it's full-blown war. And it's, it's wonderful. So there is no redemption for him, you don't think? I mean, you never know, you know. I haven't read past three episodes, but... Uh, no, I mean, I think I, I can certainly see this season sort of remaining very antagonistic. Yeah. How do you feel about the shorter season? Uh, I feel okay with, about it, to be honest. I um, I don't know what they have planned for us, to be totally honest here. I, I, I don't know if they want to pick up a back end, if they're just, you know, what they want to do. If this, I don't, I really don't know. Um, but 13 is okay. 22 is long. It's really long, and it also doesn't give you a chance to work on other things. So I'm kind of excited to have the, the opportunity to work on some other projects. Um, but but yeah, it's going to be a, a really great um, package. I think it's really hard to write 22 episodes. 13, you could really focus in and, and write some great stuff and have a true arc to it. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they what they come up with. So far, I haven't seen past three episodes, and, and they're all really intense. And so fun. direction that Bernard's been taking? Not really. I mean, I mean, you know, the typical kind of, oh, I'm so upset with you. I'm like, they're not. They're not. <laughs> because let's be honest, I mean, it's it's so much more fun right. uh, to have bad bad guys. It's, it's uh, and I think he's better as a bad guy. It just fits him better, you know? Um, and let's be honest, I mean, if you've been watching the show, you know that it was a matter of time. Like, you know what I mean? It's like watching, like, a lion tamer. You're like, yeah, it's only a matter of time before his head's bitten off, you know? Like, but it was, it was fun while it lasted, you know? So it's, it's, it's what it is. It's like Renard's like this caged animal. Eventually he's going to strike. But do you think he thinks he's the caged animal, or do you think he's the bad guy, or do you think he's just kind no, of a survivor? No, I think, like, you know, as actors, you never judge your character. I mean, I'm talking to you guys on an objective level, but as actors, no. You just you find the reason for any of his actions and everything is justified. And in my own world, like when I sort of think about him or when I you know, embody him, everything he does is fully justifiable to me based on his backstory, based on the things he's undergone, based on the circumstances in the world, you know? And I don't think there's a single bad person out there who really th thinks of themselves as a bad person, i.e. Donald Trump, 
But anyway, so... I'm, I'm not kidding. Uh, sorry, not sorry. But anyway, uh, so, you know, we just kind of like, when you have a mission and you have a purpose and uh, it's utterly justifiable in your universe, that's, that's all that matters. This is much calmer. <laughs> I know nothing. I plead the fifth. I know everyone probably pleads the fifth for all you guys. It's so funny because it's like everyone's like, I can't talk about anything. Yeah. Exactly. I can't talk. <laughs> so one question we just had that we we're going to talk about is, you know, what is the attitude of the cast? Like, is it that this is the final season or that you guys just don't know at this point? We don't know. We don't know. There's no confirmation of anything. We've actually thought that for the past several seasons you know that would this be the last this is going to be the last we never know so i think people are kind of assuming that because it's been a, a shorter order than before but i think they've got so many shows going on that it's uh it's tough to give everyone a that full 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 order we've been lucky to be here so we're just we're just kind of grateful in terms of attitude we've always felt that way so you know we've always been kind of like uh, uh, the underdogs kind of push through, and here we are in a sixth season. So we we always go. This may be the last, but nothing's been confirmed at all. So last season you transformed. I did. Yes. These are some big changes. You These had. are huge, huge, fantastic changes. <laughs> I feel powerful. Well, I was just going to ask, how does it feel? Playing <laughs> it feel. It's interesting because I was like, first when I read it, I was like, oh no. Is he going to go to the dark side and like get killed off? You know, as an actor, you're always like, am I going to get killed off? <laughs> but, you know, he's always been inherently a cop. But I do feel it's given me a whole emotional thing to play with. It's, I mean, these things, sci-fi takes you out of your realm. It's not like you're just imagining this human thing that's happening to you. Like, you know, whatever. It's, it really makes you imagine beyond that. So it is, it is, for me as the actor, I've felt a lot more power. Which for Wu, I think, is a really great thing. Because he's always felt like probably, you know, the underling that's kind of do this, do that, even though he's a sergeant. You know, he is the kind of managerial side of it all. So this has been great to actually be a part of the team and be useful. It's really what, awesome. Yeah. What's it been like for you to kind of, I mean, I've seen all the characters have, like, changed slowly. Like, if yeah. you can nickel out, get nickel out, get used to it you seem to just jump right in. Like, I'm going to the books, I'm gonna go get, figure out who it is and what it is. What's that been like for you to kinda of take that turn so quickly? Uh, at first it was, it was it, you know, I, 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 when I read it, I go, ugh, that's tough. And then you kind of find it inside, you kind of find it emotionally. But it is, it is, um, for me, in terms of like being so freaked out about this whole thing from the get-go, you know, and, and, and then suddenly discovering it it was like at that point I was supposed to be pissed at Nick and Hank because they hadn't told me anything but I, it, I that was kind of pushed aside because I got so excited about it which I love you know I love that about this particular character he's kind of he's kind of like a kid you know even with this it's like oh my god I get to turn into a creature let me try it afraid, let me try it I'm gonna try it I'm gonna try to get angry in front of my mirror and then I'm gonna stop it and then I'm gonna see what I can do with it so it has been it's been something to play with. You, it's interesting because you, you can tell that you watch a show you it, because it's like that's true. Like in, internally for an actor, it's it's very tough to make that switch right away. But finding it has been kind of the gratifying part. That scene where you showed up with a shotgun and just were like, okay, let's go. It was the, one of the best well, scenes all season. Like. <laughs> that's it. And the thing, Wu is almost like kind of like you know, I, I'm going to prove my worth. So I'm going to try to not be afraid of this. I know this happens. So let me try to prove my work. W-U-R-T-H. <laughs> Just to clarify. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome, guys. Thank you. How's everybody? Good afternoon. So, next season, yes. Luke is going to be going after Renard. Kind of. Nick. Nick's going to be going after Renard. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't end things on a, on a high note. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're at odds, uh, officially. And, um, you know, I think the mayor, I mean, the, the, the captain, now mayor, is going to hide behind his mayoral powers and uh, influence, you know, political influence. And so I think the question is going to be raised as to, you know, how much longer does, uh, excuse me, uh, Nick and Hank and possibly will have on the force, you know what I mean? Because, you know, they're starting to bend the rules and break laws and I think the captain knowing what he knows can really sort of have some sway and some influence as to uh, 
how long our, our, we'll keep our jobs. And you finally got to have a love interest last season. Well, you know, like any fling, they don't last long. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're fun in the beginning, <laughs> and then uh, you hit a hit a snag. Um, no, I mean, it, you know, it, again, it's it's about the journey. So it, it's always more interesting when you meet an Eveline. You know what I mean? Uh, than just to, uh, so you know those those women are always tricky, but they're but they're a lot more fun. You know, there's a lot more adventure with the uh, the ones that have just a, a twinkle in their eye. What do you think Hank would do if he wasn't a police officer? Nothing fun. Uh, th this is a lot more adventure. Uh, you know, I, he, he'd probably be teaching kids CPR or something like that. Uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it was funny. I used to I used to have a. Uh, when I, before I, when I was in the business, before anybody knew who I was and I was single and everything, I used to tell women I was a sanitation worker, worked at the post office, and had a whole, you know, life that I created, you know, just to see if they could still be attracted to, you know, just the guy that they met, you know what I mean? And you realize, women like somebodies. <laughs> you realize that very quickly. They like somebodies. So, you know... Uh, I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't make hit too many home runs. <laughs> Fortunately, I found my wife, and she uh, appreciated the guy I was. But uh, but those are fun times. You learn a lot about yourself, and you learn a lot about people. Uh, just sort of creating an alias of sorts. You know what I mean? Sort of this mild-mannered every man, and uh, and and they go. You know, you're at the bar, you're at a club, and they're like. Um, no. <laughs> You'd be cool in like Cherokee, Iowa, but uh, you're not cool in LA <laughs> or New York. With the big battle coming and fights and everything, you guys, do you think he could, Hank could go back to being a regular cop again? Do you think that's possible? No, there is no regular cop anymore for Hank. You know what I mean? It, it, I mean, it's like you, you become like working with like uh, Ethan Hunt after this. You know what I mean? It's like if this mission, should you choose it? You know what I mean? There is no regular, you know. You have to, it's like got to go to like the next heightened element uh, aspect of what it is to fight crime or espionage or something like that. But you know, next he, you know, he'd be uh, a deep like undercover um, infiltrator of all things evil in, in the world. Uh, that would be fun. <laughs> you know. <enough>. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. A fun arc to play last year. It was like a totally different change. It was really fun. I loved it. I it was more difficult for me than um, than at least you know I've really been able to play three characters on Grimm, so I consider myself really lucky. Warm Juliet, Evil Juliet, and then Eve. And Eve has been the hardest because I'm loud. I'm expressive. I'm warm, and Eve was like cold and calculating and robotic and you know, really there's like a tremendous amount of conservation of energy. Um, but I watched some great movies for inspiration, Ex Machina, The Luke Besson, Nikita, and uh, I went into it and, you know, Norberto Barba was really great about coaching me and uh, it ended up being super fun. But it's funny though, they, I started training to put muscle mass on, so I was thinking, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be doing fight scenes right and left. But Eve is so powerful, all she has to do is look at someone and make their head explode. So there was very little actual fighting. Yeah. This next season coming up, are we going to see Eve at all, or is it back to being your normal character? It's Eve. Okay. It's, a, it's a continuation of where Five left off. So we don't know that it's Juliet yet. We know okay. that it's Eve, and, and she might be feeling some feelings and some guilt. And that's probably one of the, the main storylines that's going to get resolved throughout season six. That's kind of an interesting art for you to play, though, putting those two together and kind of fighting for her soul. I love that. Like, yeah. there being a push-pull, yeah. um, almost like Jack the Ripper kind of a thing going on. Like, who's who, who's it going to be? And you obviously want her to end up with Nick, right? You know, I've said this before. <laughs> Eve doesn't need a man. Just so we're all clear. I know there's a lot of shipping and people like Natalie and people like Niquette. From my point of view, 
Eve doesn't need a man, so if she ends up single or um, with someone else, then more power to her. So this next season, they're all going to be going against Renard. How pivotal a role is Eve going to play in that? Well, at this point, the only, you know, Burkhart and probably Eve, we don't know yet if she's lost all her powers. So as, you know, from where the, the knowledge that the fans have, Eve is still as powerful as Renard going forward. But she also might lose her powers. That's why you guys all have to watch. <laughs> I like how you put that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so if she does lose her power, she's still going to be able to be part of the fight, though, right? She's very much included in um, the gang going forward. And how do you feel about having this shorter season? I honestly, we are so grateful to even be going into a sixth season. That doesn't happen that often anymore. And by the end of season six, we will have shot 123 episodes of television. And uh, I have nothing but gratitude. I know David, my love, is exhausted. So he's kind of like, all right, I'll take it. You know, and he's also really excited about directing. So it's all good. Are you looking forward to having him direct? I really am. He's he's very prepared. He's been shadowing on set for almost two years. Any any day, any day off, he's been reading books. He's taken meetings. He really is like ready for this. He was in pre-production all last week. He's doing pre-production all next week, and then he starts shooting on Monday. So it'll be interesting. It could be a fun dynamic to yeah have to add that to the relationship too that he's directing you now. Yeah. Well, they had to logistically because. In a typical Grimm episode, he's primarily in you know most of the scenes, and they can't do that with him directing. So it's a really cool way they wrote him out that I can't wait for people to see, and I also can't talk about. <laughs> no, we're picking up where we left off. A lot of complicated issues, a lot of complicated relationships, and we're trying to deal with all of them. You know, the Eve, Juliet, the Stick, Diana. Uh, Renard's relationship with Nick, Renard's relationship with Adeline. Um, he, Renard's going to have to deal with him uh, himself. Quite literally. Yes. And Eve Juliet now is sneaking back in. You know, she's starting to feel things again. And, and the power that's of the come stick. Easily, and the power of that stick. It affects everyone differently. Where's it, where does it, it come, come from? from? What does it mean? How does it do what it does? So are you approaching this season with uh, you know, wrapping up most of the storylines in the event that it doesn't get picked up for additional episodes? Well, not exactly, no, because what we approach every year of like, what are we doing different this year? And how are we evolving the characters, changing the relationships? And what are we explaining on a cosmic level? Because Grimm has an answer for everything. History, royalty, Nazis, whatever. And um, so we're just doing, you know, we, we're doing what we do. Obviously there will be climaxes and resolutions but it's it's not like we're going to finish off anything they'll still be out there fighting yeah. in the world yeah they'll go on they'll go on without us <laughs> possibly better without us <laughs> next season you guys are going to be going up against Renard how's yeah. that going to change the dynamic he's, of the whole group yeah well he's gone full evil he's tasted he's tasted a little bit of power as the mayor of Portland Oregon the most powerful position in the world <laughs> And uh, I want to be alderman one day. Um, <clears throat> no, man, he's gone full dark side. And he looks good and little in black. You know, he's got that, like, he has, like, a deter kind of, like, mock turtleneck. He's, like, going full. <clears throat> um, his nipples, you can see through it. Um, sorry, this is audio. Um, uh, they get hard when he talks about power. It's true, they just... Um, <laughs> every time. So uh, we go against Renard. It's intense, man. He plays a good villain, Sasha. And uh, we, I think, as a gang, if he becomes mayor, he can kind of have the city in his palm of his hand and all the power in that. So we try to, avoid, we try to make that not happen. <clears throat> yeah. Do you have a preference for Nick's personal relationships? How you want those to work out? Yeah, Nick wants to be with the woman who wants to kill him the least. <laughs> he, like, 
I feel like he should have like just like a thermometer, like a gauge, just like oh, we're in the blue zone. Come with me. Um, but uh, it's been a, it's been a, I mean, it's the veritable Jerry Springer show. If all that stuff ever comes to a head, <clears throat> you know. And this moving forward, is it going to be more even like even more action oriented this next season because it's going to be more of a war between you guys or? Well, what I don't see happening, and I'm actually pleased about this, is I, I think that the world, that we're going to keep it more into the core of our eight regulars and then, and then trouble, you know, with trouble. Um, I think we're going to do more of that and kind of watch how that all uh, plays out between the dynamics of these people as opposed to bringing in a much, much greater world. I'm actually very excited about that. The first three episodes have seemed to be uh, really dealing with these plot points, not kicking anything down the road, it really kind of digging in, so it's neat. So it's more focused, maybe, than... Very, but like the fans of Grimm and the, and the uh, religion of it and whatever, whatever myth we've created behind it, is we're, we're dealing directly in it, and we're not teasing something for a nebulous, maybe never answer. We're, we're dealing... We're, kind of putting it all out there.